My name is Pastor Rick. I'm, one, I'm actually one of the sons of this house. Amen. Uh, I have the honor of being one of the six original members that helped start this ministry so many years ago. Uh, and and most, some of you got here after uh, I was sent to Boston. I, I pastor a church called uh, Christ the King uh, in Boston. I want to thank all of you that came to celebrate with us last week. Uh, as we celebrated four years, uh, but those that I don't know, I, I want to hug you, get to know your name, handshake you. I'll be in the back later. Uh, Bishop, let us bring some some hoodies and T-shirts and all that good stuff that I'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, but I uh, am excited what God is doing here, and I'm so honored to be home. I love this place. Amen. Uh, I send gre receive greetings from my wife, Pastor Eve, and my son, Jaden and Judah. Uh, they are in Boston. Uh, she's preaching this morning. Jaden just turned nine years old. He thinks he's 21, so y'all pray for me. Um, and Judah is two, uh, but he's really 40. Um, so he's the one I really need. He don't need prayer. I need y'all to fast for him, all right? Because the Bible says that some things only happen through fasting. And so I need a couple of you that are anointed to fast. Will you just fast for my two-year-old and hook a pastor up, Amen. Uh, before we get into word today, uh, my wife and I have the privilege of uh, leading something that's called Above and Beyond. And for those of you that don't know, that is a... Uh Check one, two. Oh, I like this. It gave me bass and everything. Uh, one of the amazing things we get to do is to lead something called Above and Beyond. And Above and Beyond is a ministry that's dedicated to uplifting urban inner city youth. Uh, for the glory of God, last year we, uh, were, we were the first bilingual uh, ministry to fill an arena in Boston with over 3,000 young people. Uh, this year, amen, that's a kingdom victory. That's, that's a victory for all of us. Uh, this year, I thought, the, I thought God was getting, letting me work less this year, but he actually gave me more work. This year, we didn't fill an arena, but we actually are doing the same conference Three different times in three different states with three different group weekends. And God has been doing some amazing things. And we're getting ready to go to the Bronx, New York for the first time. And um, so I want you to help me pray. Uh, but the way we make this possible is through your prayers and your generosity. One of the things we do is above and beyond every year for the glory of God. We have sent seven Christian kids back to college to help further their education. Amen. And... Uh, I told God, I don't, if you're going to call me to empower a generation, then I want to do the spiritual stuff. I want to preach. I want to pray. I want to prophesy. But I also want to help empower them in the natural. And so you can help make that scholarship happen. There's some hoodies. There's some T-shirts. There's backpacks. Listen, Walmart ain't got nothing on Pastor Rick, okay? Joe, Joe think, um, I have something. I was going to speak to y'all in Spanish. I have something for everybody, all right? Uh, and so we got a couple things. We got a T-shirt that says, trust God and chill. Um, I think we got different colors. My staff might get mad at me. Uh, we got t-shirts, we got our, our, our good faith not fear hoodies. Listen, it's, winter, it's fall time, y'all. It, it, this is when it gets cold so y'all can get nice and warm and, and, and rock your faith at the same time. And we actually got faith not fear backpacks. We only have a few left, uh, but they're at the back table. Uh, and every time you grab something, there's onesies for the babies, there's dog tags. I mean, I tell you, they got something for everybody, all right? So here's what I need you to do at the end of the, at the, end of the service. I need you to stop by the table and uh, pick something up. Amen. Y'all ready for the word of God? Amen. Amen. Open your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 11, verse 6. Matthew chapter 11, verse 6. For those of you that don't know me, I, I want to stay connected with you. We do that through social media. You can learn more about our ministry and our family. Uh, you can follow us at Instagram or at Facebook at Pastor Richard Piet. Don't look at me on Snapchat because that's of the devil. Um, yeah, look, all the young people got mad. Yeah. How, how you going to post something and just going to disappear like that? If I post something, I want it to be there. If it has to hide, then I don't have to post it. Amen? All right. Look, some of y'all like, oh, I was with you, preacher, till then. Right there. Hallelujah. Y'all ready for the word of God? Can we close our eyes? Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege to be in your house. Father, we declare that we are good soil and that every seed that, falls for, that comes forth falls on good ground. Speak and we will listen. Allow myself to decrease that you may increase, Father God. Give me articulation of speech, Father God, clarity of mind, that your people might hear a word that comes from you. Father, anoint our minds to understand, anoint our hearts to receive, and anoint our hands to carry out what thus saith the Lord. And if you believe that, can you just say amen? Amen. amen. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Today I have the privilege 
of kicking off a brand new series for Vita Church, uh, and it's called Walk the Walk. And so uh, the honor that I have today is to be kick off a series that has to do with faith. Can somebody say faith? Now, I'm excited. This is one of the things that I love preaching about. This is something that I carry very deeply uh, in my spirit. I believe that we are a faith church. I believe that God has called us to lift up people of, of passion, of power, and of faith. And I believe uh, that it's very important for where God wants to bring you, for you to understand the importance of what God is going to say today. So I need you to just look at somebody and say, for the next few minutes, don't talk to me. Just look at them. Say, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at somebody else. Say, don't text me either. Don't text me either. Tell them, tell them, I'm about to hear the word of God and I got to concentrate, amen. Uh, today I want to talk about under the topic, a little is more than enough. Can you just say that with me? Say a little is more than enough. Now I'm going to warn you, I am Pentecostal from the tip of my head to the sole of my feet. So I need y'all to be a holler back church today, all right. So if you like something, say amen, say hallelujah. You can shout high, you can, I was going to say shout high five. You can shout, you can slap high five, but I want you to uh, be excited about the word of God. And listen, I know uh, 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 y'all love her, but can you help me uh, wish a happy birthday to my, my son's godmom, Jasmine, in the corner over there? Yeah. I, listen. I, I love that lady. It was her birthday yesterday, and she was at my son's birthday party serving and cutting cake and helping. And that's the kind of leaders you have, that when they should be celebrating themselves, they find time to celebrate somebody else. Amen? And that deserves to be uh, honored. So I love you, girl. Thank you very much. All right. Are you with me? Hebrews chapter 6. Uh, or Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Somebody say faith. faith. Now, before we get into the scripture, I can't tell you how on point God is with the worship song that y'all just sang. Because the song that we just sang talks about being confident. The song that we just sang talks about not operating in the spirit of fear. And you need to understand before we get into the scripture that fear and faith are always fighting against each other. A matter of fact, fear and faith are opposing gangs. They live on different street corners. They wear different colors. They speak different languages. They don't get along with each other. And you have to understand that if you are going to be a person that operates in faith, then you are going to be a person that opposes and rejects the spirit of fear. You cannot operate in faith in fear at the same time. And so if you're somebody that struggles with timidness, if you're somebody that struggles to make a decision, if you're somebody that struggles with fear in your life, I want you to know that fear is, 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 fear is a uh, 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 assassinator of faith. Fear and faith, cannot, fear and faith cannot abide or hang out in the same area. So that every time the spirit of fear tries to show up in your life, every time the spirit of intimidation tries to show up in your home, every time the spirit of timidness tries to show up in your business or in your ministry, you need to understand that that's the perfect opportunity for you to operate in the, in the presence of faith. Somebody say faith, faith. not fear. Faith. All right, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Let's get into it. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. In order for you to understand where I got to get you today, uh, and I'm going to try to do it in the same time Bishop would, but I don't have that anointing, so y'all pray for a brother. Um, <laughs> uh, in order to understand how faith works, you need to understand that every natural truth is tied to a spiritual truth. Y'all with me this morning? Every natural truth is tied to a spiritual truth. And what I mean by that is in the natural, if I go to Walmart and I want to buy a t-shirt, then when I, I go and I pick out the t-shirt that I want, I make it to the cash register. And when I make it to the cash register, I can't just tell them, hey, this is my shirt. And when they tell me, hey, it's, it's $25.95 or whatever the case is, I can't just say, well, here's my face. Let me take the shirt. They're, the cashier is going to tell you, I need some cash. I need a card. I need a check. There has to be a transaction. Amen, somebody? And in order for me to receive the shirt, I have to have a transaction of cash. That is the currency of the world. Somebody say currency. The kingdom of God has a currency as well. And the kingdom of God's currency is faith. In order to receive miracles, in order to receive healings, in order to receive breakthroughs, in order to receive the promises that God and scripture promises that should be yours, there has to be an exchange. There has to be an interaction. I must understand that I cannot pull anything down from heaven unless I first make a deposit. And the deposit that I must make is called faith. 
oftentimes we lay claim to healing, we lay claim to the promises found in scripture, we lay claim to the promises that men and women of God speak over ourselves, and we get frustrated because some of us in this room have promise after promise and, and prophecy after prophecy, but many of us struggle in the area of fulfillment, and could it be that you have prophecy but you haven't made the right exchange? You're asking for something that you do not have the currency to, 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 to achieve. You're asking for something that you don't have the currency to purchase. And so you have to understand that when God gives me a promise, that when God speaks over my life, when God says something over my children or over my family, I, there has to be an exchange of faith. Somebody say faith. So the world's currency is cash. The kingdom's currency is faith. But here's the problem. The, the devil, uh, our adversary, he, uh, the Bible says that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. All right? He's not nothing good. He's not nothing nice. He's very real, just like our God is. So is he. And here's the thing. Because he cannot create anything, Pastor, how do you know that? I know that because the scripture tells me his capabilities when it says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil is not a creator. He's a thief. Uh, so he's not creating anything new. All he can do is take or manipulate something that God has already created for our good. He takes it, he filthifies it, he, he, he damages it, and then he tries to use it, get us to use it because he understands that if his kingdom was going to move, then he needed the currency the same way God needed the currency. So what did he do? He took faith, he manipulated it, turned it inside out, and calls it fear. So now, whenever you operate in fear, you can't get yourself promises, you can't get yourself fulfillment, you can't get yourself breakthrough. What fear can buy you is broken promises. What fear can buy you is lack. What fear can buy you is being stuck and tormented and toiled in the same area, believing for something greater but never being able to achieve it. The reason why the enemy operates so often in the spirit of fear is because he understands what we lack to understand, and that is that fear is a currency, and it will always buy you stuff that you really don't want. The problem with fear is that you can't go and exchange it and say, hey, 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 devil, I didn't want this. The only way you can exchange fear is to override it with the currency of faith. The enemy does not know what to do with people who operate in faith. Pastor, how can you say that? Because in order to understand where, where we're going this month as we talk about walk the walk, you've got to understand what is faith, why is it important, what does it do, and how does it work. And so if I'm telling you today that faith overrides fear and that faith gets you the promises of God, then what you need to understand is, is what faith is. And faith is very simple. According to our Bible, according to our doctrine, you need to understand that faith is evidence. Somebody say evidence. That what I have not seen already exists. Woo. See, 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 it takes some crazy people. See, Christianity isn't for those of you that think you got it all together. Christianity isn't for people that don't mind being made fun of and being looked at. Christianity is for those crazy people that can believe something you haven't seen. You can believe in a God you haven't seen. You believe you heard his voice, but you've never seen his face. Uh, you believe that one day he's coming back for a church. You believe the scripture that a man built a boat and that animals came out of nowhere to fill a boat. You believe that a man laid on a cross. He was crucified, dead, and buried, and on the third day... He came back up, but before he came back up, he stole the keys of death. We believe that. We believe that one day a trumpet's going to sound and God's going to come back for his church. We are a crazy group of people. We got to learn that faith causes me to believe in things that I have not seen. But just because I don't see it doesn't mean it don't exist. Pastor, well, I just need you to prove that. Have you ever seen oxygen? You don't see it, but you know it exists. Why do you know it exists? Because you're reaping the benefits of the oxygen even though you don't see it. Oh my God. There are some things in the kingdom that when you learn to operate in faith, when you learn to walk in faith, you might not see it. But my evidence is that I'm reaping the benefits of something I have not yet seen. I can't feel it. I can't touch it. But there's something happening in my life. And it's only as the result of faith. Somebody say faith. This is why scripture teaches us that we walk by faith and not by sight. Because if you walk by what you see, you'll miss what you don't see. Uh, pass, pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you're somebody that goes, well, look at this and look at that and that's this color and that's that color. No, 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 no. You've got to be somebody that sees what you see in the natural but know that something's working out behind it that you can't see. 
There's this, there's this social media meme that, that everybody sh uh, shares all the time, and it's this kid walking through a city street, and you see him, and he thinks he's just walking, him and his homie, and you see, like, all these angels and all these different things happening around him, and the meme says, like, the unseen world. The truth is that that, that is exactly what faith is. Faith lets me know that there are things happening around me that I cannot see, but I know they are real. Uh, this is why when the doctor says it's cancer, uh, I, I don't have to cry myself to sleep. I don't have to get stressed out and write my will. I don't have to do any of that. Why? Because the Bible tells me that by his stripes I am healed. And so I might not see the healing, but there's something working for me called the blood of Jesus. There's something working for me called my faith that allows me to stand flat-footed and say that might be what the doctor's truth is, but the truth of my God is something different. My faith says I'm healed. My faith says I'm whole. My faith says that if I can stand and believe, then God will do exactly what he said he would do. Somebody say faith. So, 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 so I got to understand that it is this faith thing. So not only am I a Christian, but I am a man of faith. I am a woman of faith. My family is a family of faith. You got to make a decision every day you wake up not to live by what you see, not to live by what you feel. Let me just do, do a parenthesis right here. Your feelings are not intelligent. So, 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 so why would you listen to, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Can I, Bishop said I can preach it, I can preach it like it was my own house. So I'm going to say it how I feel. Why would you listen to a stupid person? It don't make no sense. If you broke, I'm not going to go to you for advice on how to work with money. If your marriage is struggling, I'm not going to go and ask you how to keep my marriage together. Uh, if, you, if, if, if you're weak in an area, then I am not going to go to you and ask you for advice in the area of your weakness. No, no, no. I got to learn to go to places that are strong, that are wise, that, 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 that have faith, that have strength, that have testimony in those areas so that I can learn. Amen, somebody? So, so, so if your feelings are not intelligent, why do you always listen to them? <laughs> Today I came to tell somebody you need to learn to ignore your feelings and teach your feelings what to do. Yeah, well, Pastor, that sounds good coming from there, but you don't know what I go through. Brother, you don't know what I've gone through. I know, I know what it is to have heartbreak and, 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 and to have hatred and to go through serious things in my life and have to stand flat-footed and declare the goodness of the Lord. And, and, and in public, everybody sees one thing, and in private, something else is happening. But I made a decision. I might have woke up crying, but I'm going to cry all by myself. I'm going to pray, and by the time I get into the parking lot, I'm going to dry my tears. I'm going to step out, and I'm going to say, the Lord has been good, blessed, and highly favored. This is the day that the Lord has made. See, see. See, you got to learn to override your feelings. And how I override my feelings is with faith. I might be sad, but that's temporary. I might be upset, but that's temporary. I might be disappointed, but that's temporary. My feelings are not intelligent, so they don't tell me what to do. Uh, look at somebody and say, get a diary, but don't listen to your emotions. Yeah, yeah, write it down, baby. Cry if you have to. Get mad if you have to. The Bible says be angry, do not sin. Do whatever you got to do, but don't listen to it. <laughs> you know, my mama used to tell me when I got in trouble that she would get frustrated because she would try to correct me. And when she went to correct me, she'd be like, uh, Papito, what's wrong with you? You're, you're listening to me, but it's going one ear and out the other. That's what some of you need to do with your feelings. Let it go in one ear and out the other. When the time that conversation ends, just leave it right where it is and walk away. Somebody say faith. So... So we, in order, we got to understand uh, that this is important. This is how the kingdom moves. This is how my prophecy moves. This is how my promise moves. This is how my fulfillment moves. Now, now, now why is it so important? Because of the verse we just read. Hebrews 11.6 says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Woo! So now I'm going to come right down your lane. Just give me a moment. That means you could give big offerings and still not please God. You can be in every service and still not please God. You can come up for prayer and still not please God. You can quit smoking, quit drinking, quit laying around and acting like a hoochie or a hood rat. You could do all that. Get your life together and God could still not be pleased. Why? Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. Uh, see, 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 you think he's pleased because you woke up one Sunday and raised your hands. You think he's pleased because you used to smoke five packs of cigarettes and now you packed one. You're in a process, but baby, you could do all that. But with the absence of faith, according to Hebrews, you'll still not please God. Uh, so could it be that the reason why some of us are frustrated is because we've allowed God to change us, but we haven't allowed him to build our faith? 
So we come and we worship him. We come and we sing about him. We come and we serve. We come and tell others about him. But we secretly still don't believe that every promise in this book is for me. Yeah, I'm going to pray that they can heal me, but I'm going to go home and still depend on my medicine. Yeah, 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 I'm going to give, but I'm still not going to believe that prosperity is the desire of God for his children. See, you got to understand that until you operate in the spirit of faith, that until you operate as a man or a woman of faith, you're, you're trying and you're serving and you're giving and your sacrifice will never be pleasing unto him. Because you cannot please him absent from faith. Woo! Can you just tell your neighbor, say, where's your faith at? Where's your faith at? So, so, so. So you got to have faith in order to please God. See, that's why some of us have been serving God 5, 10, 15 years. Some of you have been serving 5, 10, 15 weeks, 5, 10, 15 days. My brother, my sister, my friend, it doesn't matter how long you've been serving him. If you do not have faith, he is not pleased. Now, I know, don't worry, we're going to get somewhere, but I need to lay the foundation so you understand the importance of that which we sing about, the importance of that in which we teach about, the importance of that on which we pray about. Somebody say faith. faith. Now, now, here's where most preachers read the scripture because it sounds good. Without faith, it's impossible to preach God. But, but Bishop started a theme called Walk the Walk. And, the, first, and the, the second part of this verse is just as important as the first part of this verse. And here's where some of you might get offended. But, but just tell your neighbor he has the anointing of offense. Yeah, yeah. My, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it sounds funny, but, but I'm anointed to offend people. But you know what? Jesus offended people. Because when you speak the truth, you, you can't always speak the truth absence from uh, uh, offense. So, so, so most preachers like to leave it right there. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But then it says, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. Okay? So this is not a question. God, if you're there. God, if you're listening. God, if you care about me. Hello, he does. My faith is evidence of that. I accepted him because I believe that he desires the best for me and mine. Amen? But then it says... And this is the part people get mad at. And that he exists, that he exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Uh, so it's not enough to have faith that he, that he lives. It's not enough to have faith that he exists. There is a, there is a, 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 a dogmatic, religious, broken truth that has crept into our church. And what it means is that people are afraid to prosper. People are afraid to be blessed. People are afraid to want more, to want bigger, to want better. And, and, and because we say, well, we're, we're, we're just humble. Why would God want you to have all that? Listen, my faith tells me that God desires to reward those who seek him earnestly. So it's not bad for you to want bigger. It's not bad for you to want better. It's not bad for you to want to be employed and move from the projects to a house or a hoopty to a car or a bus to a train. It's not bad for you to want to upgrade because my faith teaches me that not only does he exist, but God wants the best for his children. Can you just look at somebody and say, you can be broke if you want to, but I got a God that wants to bless me. You can struggle if you have to, but God has something for me that I do not have for myself. And my faith says he wants to give it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, see. Religious people want you to believe that God don't want you. But the Bible tells me that God wants us to prosper just as our soul prospers. It is not the will of God that you struggle. It's the will of God that you live blessed. Every area. So, so, so the Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God came that you would have life and have it to the full. And, and, and full means nothing lacking, nothing missing. It means I have enough to handle my responsibilities and be a blessing to the kingdom of God. It literally means that every area of my life is designed to be blessed by God. My faith teaches me that God is real, that God exists, and that God wants to bless me. Uh, so, 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 oh, I hear you, Holy Spirit. So, see, because some of you, yeah, some of you are, are struggling and, and, and you've allowed people to tell you what you can have faith for. But why would you allow somebody to tell you how you can work your faith? Never allow people who lack their own faith tell you how to use yours. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
they're struggling to, to trust God for their own self. And so because they struggle with their faith, they tell you, you really think he wants you to have all that? Are you really, do you really deserve that position? Are you really qualified? Who told you I need to be qualified? I got a faith and I got a God that's working for me. And the thing about God is God likes to use unexpected people. And so he'll take somebody that everyone says is disqualified, he'll lift them up and he'll qualify them in the process. And because I learned something about God, he'll give you more in the journey than he does in the beginning. See, see, others are stuck. Faith causes me to keep believing when others are still doubting. Faith causes me to step out in water when others are still in the boat. Faith causes me to build a bark when there hasn't been a drought and nobody has seen rain. Faith causes me to do things and believe things that others can't believe for themselves. This is why you can never get frustrated when somebody doesn't understand your faith. They weren't called to understand your faith. They were called to be blessed by your faith. You know what? Uh, I've learned in my life and in my ministry that my faith causes some people to be uncomfortable. My faith causes some people to say, yo, that, that, little, that little chubby mix guy is a little crazy. He does some out-of-the-box things. He doesn't ask too many people for permission. He doesn't look at his bank account or statistics. If God says it, he steps out on it. You know what? And the same people that doubt at the end are the same people celebrating. Uh, because people who live in faith have to learn to follow the faith and not follow the murmur of the people. Aye, 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 aye. So, so you got to break the mentality of this is just the way we are or this is just the way I live or this is just the way it meant to be. No, no, no. My faith teaches me that God is real and God desires to bless me. So, so, so we understand that faith is evidence of unseen things. We understand that faith is important because absent from it, we cannot please him. We understand that faith means I believe that he exists, but I also believe that he desires to reward me. The other day I was, um, I, was uh, I was shopping in Walgreens and I went to go pick up some stuff um, for my baby and, and, and my little baby and my sugar mama baby. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so when you're married, you can have a sugar mama too. And, um, and, and when I went to go pick up something, y'all, like many stores, they have a reward system, right? And the reward system is you put your number in there and every dollar you spend, you get all these points. So, so I was in there and I was shopping and all of a sudden, the little uh, cashier uh, says, would you like to use your rewards? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, how come nobody else ever asked me that? They said, well, sir, they're supposed to ask you every time you have something. I said, well, what do I have in there? He said, well, you have $22. I said, what? <laughs> I said, I said, I said, you, what you talking about, Willis? He said, well, I can just use that $22 and then technically everything you bought will be free. I said, I said, oh, I want to use it, yes. Because Mr. Walgreens has enough money. Let me keep mine in my pocket. Amen, somebody? So, 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 I said, yeah, I want to use my rewards. Yo, I walked out of there like I was on Rodeo Drive in California. I never felt so happy to shop at Walgreens. I was like, yeah. And then I walked into the house. I'm like, baby, I got you everything you need and a candy bar. Shama. Right? Right? Yeah, because I wasn't going to leave none of those points up in their system. I wanted everything that belonged to me. How come we understand this in the natural, but we don't understand this in the spiritual? Faith is the reward system of heaven. And some of you have rewards that have been stored up, and every time you go to the cashier, you refuse to use what already belongs to you. There are checks, there are miracles, there are healings, there are opportunities, there's open doors. But the problem is, every time you get to the cashier, you use your cash instead of using your rewards. So, so, so somebody say faith. So, so somebody here saying, well, pastor, you know, that's good. Like, now I know what faith is. Praise the Lord to everybody. But, 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 but what does it do? Let it do. Can you go over to Matthew chapter 17, verse 20? Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. See, see, because I don't just want to get you excited today because, because, I learned a long time. I can preach. I can make a Baptist shout. I know how to get people to roll on the floor and do all that stuff. But if you don't change, then, then, then I didn't do my right assignment. And so I want you to see through scripture why faith is so important. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. He says, he replied, because you have so little faith. Truly I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say this to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will be moved. For nothing will be impossible for you. 
Okay, pause. I got to do a few things. Number one, uh, today I want to talk to people that only have a little bit of something. Because the world has messed up the church into thinking you need a lot to be successful. Uh, you need a lot of followers. You need a lot of money. You need a lot of opportunity. You need a lot of strength. You need a lot of friends. Who told you you need a lot to do anything? And the verse we just read, he replies by saying, and if you have faith as little as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will be moved. Y'all like my shirt? It changes colors depending on my mood. No, I'm joking. <laughs> and, 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 see, for those of you that want to be preachers, they'll teach you that in preacher class. Before, y'all were thinking of it, now it's out of your mind because I said it myself. You say, uh, uh, uh. The, it says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain and it will be moved. Pause. Mustard seed is small. Mustard seed is tiny. And so some of you are in this room, the enemy is giving you a spirit of guilt because you say, I don't have a lot of faith. I don't have a lot of understanding. I don't have a lot of belief. I only, I only know a little bit. All you need is a little bit. Uh, a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit told me to tell, you, tell somebody today that a little bit is more than enough. A little bit is more than enough. If today you can just gain a little bit of faith, then you can literally move mountains in your life. You don't need a lot, you just need a little. The problem is that society and advertising and, and, and the world system teaches you that a little means you fail. But in the kingdom, a little means you move mountains. <laughs> it was a little cross that changed the world. It was a little girl that carried a savior. It was a little widow who multiplied her oil. It was a little bit of belief that built an ark. It's a little bit of faith that moves mountains. This is the design of the kingdom. Now, now here's the problem. You got to take the full scripture because some people said, hey, I got a little bit of faith. My mountain's going to move. No, it's not. What does the scripture say? We got to talk about the whole thing. It says, if you speak to the mountain, it will move from here to there. You know what the Holy Spirit told me in prayer one time? He said, son, the reason why you're not, the reason why the mountains don't move is because most children complain instead of speaking to their situation. Uh, uh, you can't say amen because I'm talking about you right there. You complain about the bills. You complain about the issue. You complain about the circumstance. Some of y'all complain about the church. You complain about leadership. You complain about your job. You complain about your boss. You complain about your children. You complain about your apartment. You complain about your car. And you just complaining and whining, big old crybaby during prayer. It's complain, complain, complain. But the scripture doesn't say that with a little bit of faith and a complaint, the mountain will move. The scripture says that if I have a little bit of faith and I speak to the mountain, Mountain, then the mountain will move from here to there. The reason why the enemy wants you to complain is because as long as you're complaining, you're not speaking to the mountain. Uh, so your mountain's there. <laughs> your mountain's laughing at you, making fun of your wig, your weave, your man, your chip, making fun of everybody. Just right in front of you, mocking you. And why is he mocking you? Because the mountain understands I have the right to be in place until you address me to my face. Uh, because you will never defeat what you're afraid to confront. You got to look at your neighbor and say, stop complaining. Come on, come on, y'all holler back. Say, stop complaining. And start talking to your mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, 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 see. See, that's why when, when my, when my nine-year-old, uh, uh, I testified about this before, but it's been prophesied to my wife since my son was in the womb that he'd be a pastor, that he'd be a prophet. Uh, we believe this. We teach him. We, we, we help him. He's a part of our services. He'll welcome people. He'll pray for people. When I go and preach, oftentimes if there's a child that comes to the altar, I'll have my son come and lay hands on him, and I stand there, and I help him to learn how to do it. Why? Because I believe in the prophecy over him, my, his life. But one day he came to me. He said, Papi, I'm not going to be a pastor no more. I don't want to be a preacher. I said, what demon has gotten inside of you? <laughs> and uh, he, said, he, said, he, said, he said, no, 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 I know what I want to be when I grow up. I said, well, what you want to be, son? Because God can use you, you know, you can be by vocational, you can do it. He said, Papi, I'm just going to have an ice cream truck. <laughs> I said, huh? I said, how many popsicles you got to sell to pay rent? Huh? What? You, what? Yeah, I'm going to play my favorite music and I'm just going to drive around and sell popsicles. And then you know what he said? He said, and I'm going to bless all the kids that have mean poppies like you. <laughs> I said, I said, 
Jaden, I got a belt. You might want to talk a little louder. He, I said, I said, oh, some of you got to, don't worry. The Bible says, spare not the rod. And so some of y'all would have a different situation. You just took the rod off once. I mean, let me, hold on. Let me get back, Faith. And, and, and. That'll be the one clip that Louis puts on Facebook. And, 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 and what was I saying? And so he said, Papi, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless all the kids that have mean Papi. Like, I said, mean, how am I mean? He said, yeah, because every time the ice cream truck comes, you say I can't have ice cream. So I'm going to have an ice cream truck, and you're not even going to need money. You're just gonna, I'm just going to give free ice cream to all the kids. I said, oh, you're going to be broke. We got to buy the truck, we got to buy the ice cream, then you need gas, then you need a little din 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 din. We need all that stuff, and you want to give everything away. I got to help you, boy. I don't want you to be struggling. You can give one, but the whole truck. So, so, dang. Right? So, so, so I said, boy, you ain't, you going to give away free ice cream at your church, you ain't giving away nobody ice cream truck, we ain't doing that. So, right? And for like a week, me and my son were battling. <laughs> I would pick him up from school. How does it feel to pick up an ice cream truck driver, Poppy? <laughs> I'd, be like, I'd be like, I don't know. You're going to be a preacher. <laughs> right? And, and we were battling. And then the Holy Spirit said, shut up. I said, yeah. And pray. He said, he said, if you feed it, it'll grow. But if you speak to it, it'll move. So, so I said, okay, what you talking about? He said, he said, pray, so I would pray. And then, and then the Holy Spirit said, tell him to preach while he gives the ice cream away. I said, huh? He said, yeah, yeah, tell him he can sell ice cream, he can give away ice cream, but he has to preach at the same time. And so he said, Jaden said, I can do both. I said, yes. yes. I hope there's no ice cream truck drivers in the building, because if there is, I love y'all. But I said, yes, you can, y'all can, you can do both. He said, he said, okay, then, then, Papi, I'm going to be a preacher and an ice cream man. And then all of a sudden, a few days later, we would pray. And I'd say, Father, just bless him during our prayers every night. Give him good dreams. Help him be a good listener. Father, bless him to preach when he's giving away free ice cream. And, and then all of a sudden, he, in, in prayer one night, he said, don't. Don't pray that. I said, what? I said, son, you know prayer serious. We don't be interrupting prayers. He said, no, 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 I don't want, you can't pray for me to be an ice cream man because his exact words were, I'm not going to be an ice cream man. God told me I have to be a preacher. I said, you can stay up late tonight. <laughs> right? Right? Why? What happened? What happened? I stopped complaining and I started speaking to the mountain. And you might be saying, well, your son's young. Why are you training him like that? Because that's exactly what the Bible says. Raise the child the way he should grow. And when he grows up, he will not depart from it. Uh, so, so you got to learn that the ability, that faith gives me the ability not to complain, but to speak to that thing. Yo, time's getting away from me, so let's go. go. Then it says, then it says, the mountain will move from here to there and nothing will be impossible for you. Pause. It's easy when we talk about nothing being impossible for God. It's hard when we talk about nothing being impossible for us. Uh, but faith gives you a bold, righteous confidence. If you are not confident, it's because you lack faith. Uh, there's no, pl the kingdom of God is not a place, help me Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is not a place for weak, confused individuals that are not confident in who they are. You got to wake up every morning and stand flat footed and say, I, I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. I have victory over the devil. And, no, and nothing formed against me shall prosper. I'm the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. I'm the lender and not the borrower. No sickness will not dwell near my presence. Nor shall poverty touch the hem of my house. You got to start to have a confidence that no matter what shows up, I'm going to be victorious. Because all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. Somebody say confidence. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not something spooky. It's not something crazy. It's not something weird. Uh, faith lets me know that I can be confident that I'm going to be victorious in all things. I'm not called to fail. I'm called to win. Huh. See, the problem with some of us is we go into situations planning to fail. But you got to start going into situations planning to win. God has not created you to be a failure. God has not anointed you to be a failure. Faith gives you confidence that whatever I put my hands on, I have to win at. Why? Because faith ensures that mountains will move and nothing becomes impossible for the man or the woman that operates in faith. Somebody say faith. 
Turn, come on, I got to go quickly. Turn over to Luke chapter 17, verse 6. Woo. Y'all getting signed out of today? Luke chapter 17, verse 6 says, he replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed. Pause. There we go again. We go with a little bit of faith. Tell your neighbor, you don't need a lot. You just need a little. Come on. If you have faith as side of a mustard, small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Uh, so now you're telling me that faith causes me to have, that faith is evidence, that it causes miracles and the supernatural power of God to rest on my house, that I can speak to my situations, that, that favor and, 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 and blessings will visit my house. And now you're telling me that with a little bit of faith, I can speak to a tree. It's going to dig out its roots and go walk into the sea and replant itself, Pastor? Yes. If Scripture says it, we have to believe it. So, so what does that tell me? It tells me that faith is anointed to break and to rebuild. <laughs> See, most of us like the faith that builds. You want to build a bigger church. You want to build a bigger family. You want to build a better business. You want to build a better future. But you have to understand that when you're operating in faith, there is power in the breaking as much as there is in the building. Sometimes there are things, I hear you Holy Spirit, there are things that have been planted in other gardens, there are things that have been planted and rooted against you, there are things that belong to you that have been planted and rooted in other place, and then until you operate in faith, that tree will be stuck in its place and stay there, but you got to gain faith and you got to make a decision to say, hey, 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 that tree, that, that thing that belongs to me, that thing that belongs to my family, that thing that's in my way, I'm going to talk to it and it's going to move on my behalf. Some of you need some faith. There's been some trees that have been planted against your home. There's been some trees that have been planted against your ministry. There's been some trees that have been planted against your finances. And they're going to stay there until you tell it to move. Somebody say break. Yeah, yeah. Today some of you need to break some things in your life. You need a faith that breaks your small-minded thinking. You need faith that breaks your small-minded giving. You need faith that breaks that it's okay that I have a special relationship with God and he just understands me like that. No, no, no. You need a faith that will break some things in your life. But I've come to understand that every time he breaks something, he always builds it better than it was in the beginning. <laughs> There's always a blessing in the breaking. And so today I came to talk to people, and with this I close today, I came to talk to people that only have a little bit of faith. Baby, a little is more than enough. It's all you need to get what you need out of God. It's all you need to make the difference that this needs. Listen, it's all this church needs to completely ra revolutionize this territory and revolutionize this region. All you need is a little bit of faith. And on this first day of Walk the Walk, I've been asked to teach about the faith. And the Holy Spirit told me to prophesy over your home and prophesy over this ministry. And there's three words that I want you to leave here understanding. Somebody say, see it. Say it. Step into it. This is the, the process of faith. This is the process of faith, and this is what the Holy Spirit showed me a long time ago. You got to see it, you got to say it, and you got to step into it. For those of you taking notes, see it is found in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. The Bible says that without a vision, the people will perish. If you cannot see what God says about you, then you'll never be able to faith it into existence. <laughs> That's why some of you single women, you only see yourself with bad men. That's why a good one never shows up. Some of you can't see yourself having a better job than, than, than the nine to five and struggling week to week. You think that's all you have because of your education or your language or, 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 or where you come from. Until you can see something greater, you'll never have it. So the enemy works at keeping you blinded and keeping you looking at small things. Small cars, small jobs, small houses, small families, small opportunities. You don't even want to say you're a business owner. Now they have small business. They want you to believe in everything small. Why? Because if the enemy can get you to see small, then that's all you'll ever be able to have. <laughs> that's why when we couldn't even fill this room, when we started Above and Beyond and we couldn't even fill this room, I would talk about when we would fill arenas. I would talk about when we would go on tour. I would talk about when God was going to bring us across nations. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have an opportunity. I didn't have a pass yet. I didn't have a passport yet. I didn't have a website or a following yet. But I could see it before anybody else could. And so that's why I could step into it. That's why I could talk about it. That's why I would pray about it. That's why I would celebrate about it. Why? Just because you couldn't see it doesn't mean it's not real. My faith causes me to see things that are bigger and greater than anybody can imagine. Somebody say, see it. 
you got to see this building packed from right to left, from front to back. You got to see your family prosperous. You got to see your children serving God. You got to see your husband as a man of integrity and a man of the word. You got to see your bishop building churches across a nation and being who God called him to be. You got to see Vita taking new territory and the families here prospering and being blessed. But until you see it, you'll never be able to walk it out. Stop telling people what you can dream about. See it. Talk about the colors. <laughs> Imagine the colors. Imagine the people. Imagine the house. Imagine the ministry. Imagine the business. Imagine you being who God wants you to be. Take the limits off of your imagination. Faith means I'm going to walk it out. Somebody say walk it out. So, so, so I got to see it. I got I to gotta see that every time my spouse walks in addicted, I still call him prophet. I still call him woman of God. I got to see that every time my children, the doctor says they need pills, and the doctor says they need an IEP, and the doctor says this and that, I still see the promise over their lives because nothing will stop me from seeing. Nothing will put blinders on me. Nothing can stop my vision. I refuse to settle for anything less than what God showed me could be mine. Can you just look at your neighbor and say, what do you see, what do you see, what do you see? Come on, ask him, ask him, what do you see, what do you see, what do you see? Today God brought me here to take your blinders off. Some of you are seeing too small. Some of you don't even have a vision, you don't have a dream, and you wonder why you're stuck. Because where there is no vision, there is only death. And, I, and Bishop has no idea what I'm preaching, but let me just, I feel, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And some of you have the nerve to say, well, how can Bishop say what he says? And how does Bishop see what he sees? Doesn't he see what I see? He doesn't have to see what you see. He has to see what God showed him. Uh, so you don't understand it. You don't like it. It makes you uncomfortable. You don't see the results. It's not important. If he sees it, he can have it. <laughs> so, 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 so his ability to see isn't dependent on your ability to believe. It's dependent on the faith that he has on the inside of him. Somebody say, see it. Stand to your feet. Somebody say, say it. So, so, so. Some of y'all going to laugh. Some of you might not understand what I'm about to say. But I really believe, Sister Denise, that I am a word of faith Pentecostalist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm non-denominational some days, but y'all get it. Y'all get it later. Go study. And, um, and so after I see it, I got to say it. The Bible says... One of my favorite scriptures in, 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 in the Bible. Sorry, Jesus is calling me. Uh, Proverbs 18.21 says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And he that loveth shall eat the fruit thereof. Pause. After I see it, I have to be willing to talk about it. I got to be willing to say it. Now there is a religious dogmatic issue that we need to deal with real quick. Because some of you got brought up in a season where all the preachers, because of the story of Joseph and all that, and I understand it, and, and, and I understand there's a right time to talk, and there's a wrong time to talk, but there's this lie that circles around the, the churches that says, don't tell nobody what God showed you. Don't tell nobody what God told you, because they might steal it, or the enemy might block it. Let me tell you something. When God has something for you, they can try to steal it, but it won't work, because what's for you is for you. And the enemy can't stop who God has already blessed. That is the foolish thing I've ever heard in my life. We got a bunch of believers afraid to use their mouth because you're afraid somebody's going to steal your calling. They can't steal your calling. You can't steal an anointing. That's only given by God. I had people that were blessed by our ministry that tried to build their own youth conferences. They, they rented the same schools we rented. They invited the same speakers we invited. They used, they used me and my wife's name to get different opportunities. They tried all that, and I'm not saying this to be prideful. I want you to catch the point. And when they did it on their day, they had 15 people show up in a room that fits 800. When we did it, we had a room that fits 800, and we had to send buses away. Why? Because you can try to do it if you want to. But if you haven't been called to do what I'm called to do, it's not going to work for you because God has something that he's designed for me that I've been anointed to carry and I've anointed to bless. Now let me tell you something. You got to begin to talk about what you see. You got to talk about your blessed marriage. You got to talk about your blessed children. You got to talk about your, your bigger house and your bigger car. You got to start to speak life into that thing that you see. It says life and death is in the power of the tongue. And he that loveth shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, this is what happens. Every time I speak negative, a demon comes and he takes my negative word and he runs it as far as it can go. And now I have no opportunity but to see that manifested in my life. Why? Pastor, won't God break it? God does not break his own laws just because of you. God respects his own principles. 
And so because he taught us the law of speaking life, every time you speak death, he says, I want to give you something better. But because you spoke it, now you got to deal with the results. And so you mad at God because it didn't work out. And God's sitting in heaven saying, baby, I gave you everything you need. But you used your mouth against your promise instead of for your promise. Can you annoy me? I hear the Holy Ghost. Can you just look at your neighbor and say, shut up? Some of you got to get a shut up anointing. When you feel like talking bad, shut up. When you feel like talking negative, shut up. When you feel like murmuring, shut up. When you feel like gossiping, shut up. Whenever it's not positive, just shut up. Some of you need to get bold with some of your family members. The next time they tell you, why you do all that? God don't need all that. Shut up. You don't know what I see. You don't know the faith that I carry. And I got to speak into that thing in which I see. And so if you can't speak life, you need to shut Shut up! Well, that's not going to work. And that never happened for anybody. And that's not in the region. Who do you think you are? I am who God says I am. I can have what God says I can have. And I can do what God says I can do. And if you don't have faith like that, then I love you, my brother. But you need to shut up. I don't need your voice in my ear. I got to cleanse out the negative voices so I can see and talk about what God showed me. Some of you feel confused because you got this tug of war happening. You see something, but you speak opposite of it. You got to learn to focus what you see with what you speak. You got to speak life over it. You got to speak positive over it. So, 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 so. I got a building for our church. And, 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 and we were struggling to fill one service. Can I testify? And so one Sunday I got up because I heard God and I know what God told me. I know what God showed me. And so one Sunday, and I got two of my sons here. I got two of our church leaders here. And they'll tell you one Sunday I got up, didn't ask nobody permission because I don't need to ask leaders permission when God told me to do something. Take that and walk with it. And, um, and, um, and you know what happened, Sister Denise? I said, God told me we're going to two services. They said, what? I said, God said, we got to go to two services. They said, Pastor, we still got empty chairs here. I said, we don't fit here. You don't see the people I see. You don't see the impact I see. And because you don't see it, you don't understand why I can make the faith moves that I make. My God. But I don't need you to see it. I just need you to believe with me. And so we started saying two services, two services. And then we stepped out and did two services. Can I testify? People started showing up and we don't even know who they are. I don't know all the names of the people. We try to keep up, but we can't. Why? Because we stepped out in faith. Because we saw something. We refused to see what we saw with our eyes. And we refused to speak to what we saw in faith. Say, say it. You got to talk about it. Pastor, what are you trying to say? Go through scripture. God, every time God wanted to create something, he would speak to it. He would speak to it. He would speak to the darkness and light. He would speak to the emptiness over the earth. He would speak and things would happen. There is power in your mouth. That's why when the doctor told me that I had to choose the life of my wife over the life of my unborn child, I told him that might be your fact, but that's not my truth. When I leave this hospital, I'm leaving with my wife and my son because you don't know what I know. You can tell me all the books. You can tell me all the facts. You can tell me what the blood work says, but I know what God told me. I see myself holding baby Judah. I see myself playing with baby Judah, and I'm not going to be a single dad. I see my wife by the side of me raising her children and teaching him to worship, and so he said he said pastor you sound a little crazy I said it's because you don't understand what I understand you understand education I understand faith and so and so the day came and he said are you ready to make a decision I said are you ready to see me walk out of here with my son he said so Rick I said I'm leaving with both can I tell you the secret inside there was a little bit of that fear trying to stir up but outside, I was making a decision. Wasn't no doctor, my wife, my friends, my family, my bishop. Nobody was going to know what I was feeling on the inside. Because I made a decision. I'm a man of faith. And my faith doesn't get me out of problems. My faith gets me through problems. And I got to understand that it's going to get me through this. And so the day came. And we went into emergency labor. And all the while, there's a paper sitting there. Because I got to sign it saying who life they protect. Make a long story short, she gave birth, they were still alive. God gave us the miracle. And here come the doctors. 
Your son's going to be slow. Your son's, uh, your son's going to have issues developing. Your son's going to be a diabetic. Your son's going to have brain issues. I said, brother, what have you not learned? If he, God let me get through that, then we're going to get through this. And I'm not leaving with a sick son. I'm not leaving with a disabled son. I'm not leaving with a diabetic son. So you got to redo the blood work or figure something out. But if God gave me that, he's going to give me this. And so we left the hospital with a healthy son and a healthy wife. We left the hospital with a son that has no health issues. And then a, few, a year and a half later, they said, well, listen, we told you there was going to be problems. And I looked at him. He said, your son is underdeveloping. His muscles aren't working. And he's not going to be able to walk like other kids walk. And so we're going to have to build some uh, 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 braces and some things to help your son walk. And I said, no, you're not. He's going to walk. He said, he hasn't even tried standing up. I said, I'm telling you now, we made it through this. And if we made it through that, we'll make it through this. And he said, I'm giving you, he said, I'm giving you three days. In three days, you need to come back to the hospital so we can mold them for the braces. I said, make the appointment. And before the three days, my son will be walking. He said, he said, are you serious? I said, make the appointment, but I'm going to cancel it. Mark my words, I'm going to cancel it. And we made the appointment. And my wife said, baby, I said, ma, don't say nothing. The spirit of shut up. Don't say nothing. The next day I was home all by myself with baby Judah. I was laying on the couch and he was playing on a blanket in front of me. And remember, he never stood up. He never walked. And I was there saying, God, we got three days. God, how are we going to do this? And can I tell you what happened? In the middle of our living room, Judah stood straight up with his little toy. He looked at me and then he walked away into the kitchen. And less than one day later, everything that they say couldn't happen. And Judah has been, now he's been running ever since that day. We can't keep up with him. We got to chase him around. They got to run around the church to get him. Why? Because faith overrides everything the enemy tries to steal. You got to see it. You got to say it. And you got to step into it. Worshippers, come on. Hold on. And I'll leave you with these two verses. Pastor, but, but that sounds good for you. But you got a faith I don't got have. You don't need my faith. The Bible says that he's not a respecter of man's. That what he makes happen for one, he'll make happen for anybody. So if God can do it for Rick, then God can do it for you. If God can do it for Cristo Rey, then God can do it for Vida. If God can do it for above and beyond, then God can do it for your business. Why? Because God blesses those who see it, who say it, and who step into it. And I'll leave you with these two verses. how you can make bold moves. Somebody say move. All month you're going to be hearing about faith. You're going to be hearing about moving. And here's how you can be confident. The Holy Spirit told me to pray this over you. I'm going to open the altar right now. And I, if you are believing God for great things, if you're seeing something and making a decision to speak into it today and making a decision to step into it today, if this message has blessed you, I need you right now to make your way to the altar. Don't wait. Don't. I know there's a normal protocol. We're going to break protocol. I need some radical believers. I need some believers that are expecting God for big things, great things, extraordinary things. I need some people that don't look at what they see in the eyes, but they see something greater. They see something bigger. They see something larger on the inside of them and some of you might still have a spirit of fear that, 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 that that's fighting your faith but let me tell you after you see it and after you say it you got to make a step into it you got to decide to step into that thing God can't faith without works is dead and the problem is there's some of you that claim to have faith but you ain't done nothing with it what good is having faith and not using it that's like walking when you have a car that's like eating lettuce when you have a steak on the plate I don't know who I'm talking to but some of you have faith and you ain't never done nothing with it never started a business never won a soul never served in ministry never asked God for something big but you got to make a decision to do something with the faith that you claim to have. When you're here, just close your eyes and raise your hands. There's still some of you in your seats that this message is for you. 
but you got to make a decision to move. You got to make a decision to walk in faith. And this is what God told me to do. I'm going to pray for those of you radical enough to believe. You don't need me to lay hands on you. The greatest hand you could ever get is the touch of God. See, because I learned something in my walk in faith that if the preacher don't touch me and the Holy Spirit does, then I got the exact touch that I need. That if the leader never gets my way and my hand is never held or the hug is never felt, all I need is one touch of the Holy Ghost. All I need is one touch of his presence. All I need is one touch of his power and all things have to change. See, see, I learned that the touch doesn't matter. What matters is who does the touching. Some of you missed it. I said, I learned that the touch doesn't matter. It's who does the touching that matters. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to worship. But this is what the Lord told me to speak over this church, over your family, over your finances, and over your ministry. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. Father, I declare over the feet of your children that after today, they'll make faith moves. That after today, they'll step into some things that scare other people. But we declare that wherever they plant their feet, that wherever they walk, that wherever they trample, no snake and no scorpion and other nothing meant to sting you and nothing meant to back by you will come to pass we declare that they walk into new territory and they take what belongs to them God I override every sting of the scorpion I override every bite of the snake that has come to torment your people I declare that today the strong man falls that the spirit of fear is overrun with the spirit of faith that the power of the Holy Ghost impressed on your children and then they begin to step into new places, new authority, new prophetic vision, new word, new promises, new jobs, new ministry, new marriages, new opportunity, new doors of God. I need some of you just begin to pick up your legs right there while you're praying, right there, while you're worshiping, right there, while tears are coming down your faith. Come on, you got to begin to move your legs. Faith works. In a moment, we're going to step. In a moment, we're going to step. But you got to stir up your faith. I don't care who's around you. I don't care who's watching you. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you speak to it? And today, you got to be willing to step. Deuteronomy 11, 24. Every place where you set your foot will be yours. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the Euphrates River to the Mediterranean Sea. Somebody say, step! Step! You got to make a decision to step. You got to make a decision to walk. Vida, you've been where you are long enough. I know they changed your name. I know we changed the colors, but you're not supposed to get stuck here. You got to keep stepping. I speak, Lord God, to these families. I speak to this ministry. I speak to their finance. I speak to their children. I speak to their business. Step! 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 Come on, open your mouth. I need you to begin to speak to it. We're about to step. But I need you to speak to it. I need you to say it's mine. I can see it. I can have it. I can hold it. I can achieve it. I got faith for this.